story of Ethiopia and federalism uh, is a story of federalism in a dominant party state. The ruling party, which is the uh, Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, which is composed of four ethnic-based parties, controls every state and feder every federal government. It also controls every seat uh, of federal and, and state parliaments. Uh, so this is a typical uh, federal system that operates within a dominant party uh, state. And, and this is also a party that is guided by the principles of democratic centralism, which means that the decisions made by the highest decision-making body of the ruling party, which is the central committee of the ruling party, is implemented and followed by both federal and state government officials. And tight party discipline ensures that, that these decisions are, are, are followed by both uh, federal and state governments. But as you say, things are changing, and changing very quickly. And it started almost four years ago, uh, when the, the young uh, population in Oromia, which is one of the largest states of the Federation, took to the street protesting against the, the master city plan that was prepared for the federal capital. Because they believe that the, the plan uh, continues to drive, is part of the policy of, of, the, of, of the city to drive the Oromo outside the city, uh, take their land and also pose a threat to the cultural survival of, of the group. And that protest quickly uh, transformed into a protest against what is seen as the domination of the Tigray People's Liberation Front, which is one of the uh, member parties of the ruling party. And that quickly led to the displacement of, of this party as the most influential member of the coalition and we saw the emergence of the Oromo Democratic uh, Party organization as a major player within the ruling party and its, in its leader, uh, Dr. Abiy Hamid, becoming the chairman of the coalition and becoming the prime minister of the country. So since then, what we've seen is, is uh, I think, the slow days of, of, of democratic centralism. Uh, the cracks within the ruling party are more visible than ever. Uh, and very recently, one of the state governments have openly condemned the actions of the federal government as unconstitutional and, and illegal. And that's very unusual for the Ethiopian Federation. We're no longer living in a country that's governed by a a political party that religiously follows democratic centralism. So the cracks uh, within the ruling party, as I said, are more visible. So we's, we are hearing now contradictory and competing voices coming within the ruling party. And with the possible coming of democratization, I think that will likely to be more frequent, that uh, political pluralism will uh, characterize the federation. And when that happens, the intergovernmental disputes that, are, that are already emerging are likely to be more louder and more frequent. The development suggests that, that, that uh, Ethiopia is heading to an era where it must, when it must take uh, its uh, federal experiment seriously. Uh, it's clear now that, that it's heading to an era where the party channel is no longer available to certain intergovernmental disputes, which means that disputes between different levels of government have to be managed outside the party structures. And this could be based on formally, legally established rules, processes and institutions, or it could be based on ad hoc, informal mechanisms which are based on the will of the parties. But the important point is that, that, that that a culture of dialogue and negotiation should characterize the intergovernmental relations of the Ethiopian uh, Federation.